It's Friday, December 15th, 2023. Welcome to episode 82 of the Alameda Postcast, an audio service of the Alameda Post. I'm your host, Scott Bueller. In this edition of the Postcast, the city reaches a settlement in the Mario Gonzalez case. The Alameda Warming Shelter is open, and this year the site will rotate between three locations. AUSD fills a board vacancy with a familiar name and prepares for full-time kindergarten next year. The planning board says yes to more pickleball, the Alameda Food Bank prepping for a new space, and a big thank you from the Alameda Post to our local Rotarians. These stories and more on this edition of the Alameda Postcast. Our top story. Late Thursday afternoon, the city of Alameda released a statement indicating two settlements have been reached with the family of Oakland resident Mario Gonzalez following Mr. Gonzalez's death in police custody. The first would pay $11 million to the estate and son of Mario Gonzalez, and the second would pay $350,000 to Mario Gonzalez's mother. Gonzalez died on April 19, 2021, after being detained by Alameda police officers. The officers first restrained his arms, and then one of them restrained him further by kneeling on his back until he became unresponsive. After officers attempted to revive him with CPR and Narcan, the 26-year-old was pronounced dead at a hospital. Gonzalez left behind his mother, brother, and son, for whom he was the primary caregiver. His death drew parallels to the death of George Floyd, who died in custody after Derek Chauvin, a Minneapolis police officer, notoriously knelt on his neck for 10 minutes. In December of 2021, in a report released by the Alameda County Chief Forensic Pathologist Dr. Vivian Snyder, Gonzalez's death was ruled a homicide. Subsequently, on April 8th of 2022, the Alameda County District Attorney's Office declared the officers were not criminally liable in his death. The incident was recorded by police body cameras. The city implemented the CARE team to better respond to non-criminal calls involving people in distress or having a mental crisis as a result of that incident. The separate settlements are expected to discharge and release all claims and causes of action fully and forever. The parties further agree that the settlements shall not be construed as an admission by any party of liability or of any fact that might give rise to liability for any purpose. The city concluded their statement by saying it remains committed to full transparency and accountability in the tragic death of Mario Gonzalez and extends heartfelt condolences to his family and loved ones. For additional details on this story, see Adam Gillett's article at alamedapost.com news. The Alameda Warming Shelter is open for the winter beginning tonight, Friday the 15th, and once again is being hosted by Christ Episcopal Church at Santa Clara and Grand. But the Warming Shelter is definitely a community effort, especially this year. The shelter will be open from 6 p.m. until 7 a.m. on a first-come, first-served basis. In addition to a warm place to sleep, meals and shower facilities are also provided. Last season, Christ Church was the only host, but this year the shelter will spend one week at St. Joseph's and two weeks at Twin Towers United Methodist. As of now, the shelter is scheduled to remain open nightly through March 15th. Episcopal Community Services provides overnight staff. The city provides two-thirds of the funding required to keep it going. Christ Church raises the remaining one-third of the funding from donations and coordinates meals and showers. Volunteers and donations are vital to keep these services going. You can volunteer your time for the shelter and shower programs, as well as donate money, clothing, food, and other needed items. In last year's Everyone Counts survey, it was estimated that there were in excess of 260 unhoused individuals in the city, with 180 of those being completely unsheltered. That's about 2.5% of the unsheltered population of Alameda County. For full details, including links to needed donations and ways you can make a difference, see alamedapost.com news. Last week on the Postcast, we let you know that the Alameda Unified School District was holding public interviews to fill the Board of Education vacancy left by the resignation of Megan Sweet. The decision was made to fill the vacancy by appointment rather than by election. Initially, 11 candidates submitted applications. One withdrew and another was unable to meet the requirements of the position. After interviewing the remaining nine candidates, the board voted unanimously to appoint Margie Sherritt. If that name sounds familiar, it should. Sherritt has worked as an AUSD teacher, counselor, and principal. She served on the Board of Education from 2010 to 2014 and was board president from 2012 to 2013. She and her late husband, Don Sherritt, also volunteered with the Alameda Education Foundation, where Margie currently serves on the foundation's board. AUSD Board President Jennifer Williams had this to say, quote, We are grateful to Margie for stepping forward at this time. With the troubling news about the state's budget and a renewal parcel tax measure on the ballot in March, we felt we needed someone with leadership experience as both an administrator and board member, someone who could hit the ground running. Margie fit the bill perfectly. End quote. 
For full details, see alamedapost.com slash news. Staying with AUSD, if you've got a child that's nearing kindergarten age, now is the time to prepare for the upcoming school year. If your child turns five on or before September 1st, they are eligible for kindergarten. If their fifth birthday happens between September 2nd and June 2nd, then they would attend transitional kindergarten, or TK, as it is often called. This school year brings a change for the kindergarten programs as they expand to an all-day program matching the in-school times of first through fifth grade. Wednesday will remain a minimum day with an earlier release for all grades. Information nights will be held January 16th and 17th for TK and January 18th for kindergarten. New student enrollment begins January 22nd. For times, locations, and registration links, see Susan Davis's article at alamedapost.com news. On Monday, the city planning board gave approval to a conditional use permit for seven new outdoor pickleball courts at the Hub Sports Club at 800 West Tower Avenue at Alameda Point. You might know that facility as Bladium. Building 40, a former aviation hangar, has now been portioned with Bladium and So5 soccer centers operating the soccer facilities in the northern portion of the hangar, along with the outdoor fields on the west side. The hub leases the remainder of the building. The hub added eight pickleball courts to their portion of the building interior and requested planning board approval for the seven new outdoor courts on the east side in an existing parking lot. Seven-foot-tall, screen-covered chain-link fencing will enclose the courts on three sides to dampen wind on the courts and noise in the neighborhood. The board unanimously approved the permit on condition that Hub provide an aesthetically pleasing fence screen with a design reflecting the historic district. The additions have been welcomed by Alameda's pickleball community, as the current courts on the island are typically booked out. Also at the meeting, the board unanimously approved amendments to the Reshape Development Plan and Agreement to increase the number of supportive housing units from 309 to a minimum of 332. The project will sit at the corner of West Midway Avenue and Pan Am Way. Andrew Thomas, special advisor to the Base Reuse and Economic Development Director, explained that after planning board approval of the development plans for the Reshape and West Midway projects in May, it became apparent to staff and project partners that in order to comply with specific Surplus Lands Act requirements and address the significant needs for affordable supportive housing in Alameda, it should be a goal of the joint project to ensure that at least 40% of all the units constructed between the two projects be affordable to very low- and low-income households. The amendments do not change the number of buildings, their footprints, or height, but do increase the project's density, resulting in 40% of the total housing units at the combined Reshape West Midway projects being deed-restricted to very low- and low-income households. For details on these approvals and other planning board business, see Karen Jensen's article at alamedapost.com slash news. Staying out at the point for a bit, last month in episode 79, I reported on the planning board giving approval to a development plan that would secure a new 18,000-square-foot facility for the Alameda Food Bank on Pan Am Way across the street from their current temporary home. Food Bank Director Teal Harden explains what's led up to this point, the plans for the future, and the importance of the food bank to the 1,000 families who seek their help every week. You can find that article at alamedapost.com slash op ed. Wednesday marked quite the milestone for the Alameda Post. We turned two years old. Yes, on December 13th, 2021, we published our very first article highlighting two new pieces of public art, the Webster Gateway mural and the Calamar sculpture near the Weta building. And we have to say thank you for our presence. We've been receiving some wonderful donations during our fundraising drive, including a generous grant from the Rotary Club of Alameda. As we've been reporting, local news in America is in trouble. We are saddened by the recent closing of the Alameda Sun, which is part of a larger troubling trend. According to the Local News Initiative, since 2005, America has lost some 2,900 newspapers and almost two-thirds of newspaper journalists. Your donations, advertising, and attendance at events like our walking history tours let us keep reporting on the news that matters to Alameda. AlamedaPost.com slash events for a guide to everything going on in Alameda this weekend. Food Bank players close out a Christmas carol at First Congregational Church this weekend, Friday and Saturday night. The Tap Dancing Christmas Trees will perform at Christmas Tree Lane Friday around 6 p.m. Santa will also be there from 6.30 to 8 every night through the 23rd. Congratulations, by the way, to the gang at Thompson Avenue for being named one of America's 17 best streets for Christmas lights by Thrilllist.com. Food Bank Holiday Concert at Fireside Lounge Saturday from 2 to 5 to benefit the Food Bank. Then head over to the Veterans Building for Alameda Sings at 7 p.m. Head West Market at St. George Spirits Sunday, 11 to 5. Many more events at alamedapost.com slash events. Thank you for supporting local news for Alameda. Join us as a member, alamedapost.com slash memberships. 
Remember, you can find us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Mastodon, Threads, Blue Sky, as well as our own subreddit. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel on Apple News. Find the postcast wherever you get your podcast, or simply tell your smart device to play the Alameda Postcast podcast. I'm Scott Peeler. To those who celebrate, a happy Hanukkah as the holiday comes to a close. I'll be back next Friday with episode 83 of the Alameda Postcast.